And here we go. So I'll turn it over to Sam. So, hey everyone, y'all know me. I don't have to do the introduction. So like Jenny said, um, I used to run these um, instructional tech sessions. It started out for like uh, faculty liaisons and then it's kind of like expanded out. And like, of course now it's totally fine if everyone um, comes and learns more about these instructional technology tools. So what we typically cover are like things that can help you with like courses, you know, we've done a lot of sessions in the past about Canvas, specific things about Canvas, but I thought this might be a good time to kind of be like, let's just overview Canvas and go over how it works, UNCG, and really more talking about how the libraries as a whole was involved in it. Because when I was hired, gosh, about four years ago, um, that was a big thing, right, was that uh, they wanted this kind of new position that was expanding off of other positions to involve the library with Canvas, right, um, this, you know, learning management. System. So before, um, and we're going to go over kind of a brief history of Canvas, but this is, again, more about Canvas UNCG, and I really, the slides are pretty short, and I knew that there wouldn't be a whole lot of people here, so like, this is a casual session, feel free to throw anything in the chat, I'll keep monitoring that. Um, and ask because I wanted to leave also plenty of time at the end for y'all to ask me questions. I can demo things in Canvas um, depending on your interest. And I'm also aware like that a lot of y'all do a lot of stuff in Canvas. Like I'm thinking about like I know Patrick runs a great you know student worker or, or like you know community organization like Canvas course or you know org uh, to train the students. So we can talk about that at the end. Um, you know again I acknowledge that y'all are all doing great things. So we're not going to really go over like the nitty gritty of Canvas. We're just going to talk about the overall structure and again, all the stuff that you can do as a librarian or archivist in Canvas. So here I am. <laughs> um, and then here's a link to the presentation and I'll drop it in the chat at the end. Uh, but if you're like the kind of person that wants to follow along um, throughout, if that's your like learning preference, uh, live your truth. And here it is. Um, there's also some links out to like further tutorials and, you know, guides on Canvas at UNCG, as well as like, again, guides we use to help with Canvas. So in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself again. This is a casual small group of people. It's totally cool. What are you hoping to learn today about Canvas or like, why are you here? And if your answer is like, I wanted some like time, professional development time, like in between meetings, like that's really cool and does not hurt my feelings. Um, but again, like if it's as simple as like, I just want to see if I could have come up with any new ideas about Canvas or like, I just want an update, I, you know, anything, it's cool. Um, so Sarah said, I know I miss stuff, making sure I know what I need to know. Great. We're going to talk about all the elements of Canvas and we're going to talk about, again, a lot of the different examples of what librarians are doing. And again, I think we'll have plenty of time at the end if we want to like go in and look around in a uh, safe FERPA compliant way um, where I will not show student data, but I can um, bring up the training course and kind of talk through again what different librarians are doing in Canvas. Um, again, in my role, I hear a lot of stories, you know, and like talk to a lot of people about this. So, um, yeah, and I also go to the instructional technology meetings. So here's me. Um, so again, if there's like stuff you want to know about that, we're going to talk about the history of that. Sorry. Um, so here we go. May is uh, here as well. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, Canvas is UNCG's learning management system. And, you know, every university has their own. So maybe it's, um, you know, it's for the administration, documentation, tracking, reporting, and delivery of educational courses, training programs, or learning development programs. So the big thing I usually get is that it's different than a website. Hello. I love you. Um, so that is uh, the deal. I'm guessing the chats are about May. Yes. <laughs> Yay May. They said yay May. Yay May. You're in this recording now. So why does using an LMS matter now that we know what it is? So UN Canvas got UNCG around 2015. We used to have Blackboard as our learning management system. So I don't know if a lot of y'all, if y'all, I know a lot of y'all were here before 2015, but I don't know if a lot of y'all have experience with Blackboard, but it works pretty differently. And Canvas was a competitor that came out. They're still based in Utah where they were like, we just want to make a simpler, clean interface, right? This modern, clean interface for LMS. We want to kind of get out of this old idea that the LMS is like clunky and hard to use. So that was how they came about. And they have actually become one of the more popular, yes, uh, LMS programs. I mean, I have 
very rarely, but have occasionally met someone who thinks Blackboard's better. Um, and Blackboard has shifted a lot of their interface and how they offer things based on how well Canvas is doing in the LMS market. So at UNCG, every course, right, gets a shell, um, you know, a Canvas course shell to enter content into and use it for course content discussions, announcements, and we'll talk about all these elements, right? But just to be clear too, and this was kind of almost like mind boggling for me when I like started here. Um, Cause remember I used to be an instructional technology consultant for the school of ed. So I was the Canvas administrator for the school of ed. All these people in this meeting. So um, anyway, that was uh, something you see Jenny and Sarah, they're waving at you now. So um, that was that, um, so not every instructor uses their shell and particularly pre pandemic. I don't remember the exact numbers, but again, remember, you might have, I mean, you know, I know there's some instruction librarians here, Archivist, you might have said like, oh, I could pop in Canvas, and your instructor might have been like, I don't use Canvas, or like, you know, I just email everything, and again, um, that is technically not allowed, you're not allowed to email, right, yeah, you want to take it downstairs and watch TV with Rose, yeah, bye. So um, you can, so keep that in mind, right? And I will say, I try, I, I texted or chatted the, uh, the Canvas administrator, Amanda Shipman, the other day, just to be like, do you have a basic idea of like, if now everyone's using Canvas or if the numbers, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they've shifted up. Right, that a lot of these professors who are like handing out handouts in these face to face courses, you know, grading by hand and handing it back to students. Remember, that's what people were doing pre pandemic time, even pre pandemic time where we were still very digital. Not everyone was using Canvas to grade, um, to do content, to make announcements. They were just, again, like living that face to face lecture dream. Um, and the numbers, I think, were like, uh, you know, pretty. Uh, like again, I, I think someone said something like it was like something more like 30 or 40% of classes like actually turned their shell on and used it. Again, I would assume now in this COVID uh, world we live in, it would be closer to like 80 to 90%. But again, who can say? Um, so again, that's something to keep in mind, right? That not everyone uses it. So Canvas has a um, very universal look, like I said, um, versus other LMSs. Um, they, but, and there's positives and negatives. So some LMSs like Moodle, Sakai, their um, Sakai is like open source, Moodle is open source, and they have a lot of room for you to shift the way they look based on your university. Canvas, not so much, right? There's only a couple things you can do in Canvas to make it look like your university. You can color code it, right? Like ours is color coded to that UNCG blue. Um, you and then that's about like it. You can, of course, in your courses, add images to your course shell to make it like it's an icon with an image on the dashboard. Um, and uh, but you can't change the global navigation. The global navigation is what it is, and we'll go over that if you want the interface if y'all need that update. But in the course navigation, the only thing you can do is turn things on or off or move the order. In Blackboard, you could add in your own tabs, right? That would say like readings. Right, but you can't do that in Canvas. You have to decide whether the readings live in a page or a module format. And that's about it. In terms of design, you they really recommend you use modules, but you've probably seen it at UNCG. Some people use pages and they design a more kind of button click interface. Um, and of course, people can debate all day long about like which design is better. The other thing you can do within Canvas, and this is something that's shifting all LMSs, is that you use something called an LTI, I think it's called Learning Technology Interoperability, to basically play with any other tool. So for example, there's Google LTIs, there's a Zoom LTI, that's how we get Zoom to work within our Canvas courses. And that is how we get our LibGuides to work within our Canvas courses, which I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But any tool that is outside of the company of Canvas, if it wants to play with Canvas, it has to have these. And they're basically like an app, right? That just makes it so it can ingrain within our system. So some of these LTIs are free. You can just turn them on. Um, our ITS does look at them in the background. Um, and some of them are uh, costly. Like you have to add on to your subscription or pay extra money to turn on an LTI. It just depends on what it is. So, um, Yes, so Jenny mentioned, and we're going to talk about that, I think, in just a second, um, but uh, that some students probably would be frustrating to have some in classes and some not. Um, yeah, 
So it, it can be frustrating because that also kind of leads me to another point I wanted to make is that UNCG does not use course templates. Some universities, particularly community colleges where they are much stricter, I don't want to say stricter, that may be the other word, but they're very, very, very cautious about getting sued about ADA compliance. Um, so they don't want to let instructors just go crazy with the course design, they'll give you a template. They'll say, you got to use this and you just got to plug and jug your stuff in. At UNCG, I've been here again, like what, a while, Rosa six, six, six years at UNCG overall. And um, that has never been the culture. <laughs> like instructors do not like being told what to do in their campus course. So we don't use a template. But again, remember other universities do. Like I've been to conferences where they're like, we just get this like shell and it is this way. It has banners, it's designed using modules and we just plug and jug our stuff in. Note that again, instructors usually this can make them mad. Um, some instructors like it though. They like this whole, just I just plug in things. I don't have to think about the design. Students tend to like it better because then they know readings are always gonna be in modules. Um, you know, announcements happen in this way. Whereas at UNCG, it could be anything, um, which that is a source of frustration for students at UNCG. And we can talk about this more. I work a lot with online students, students taking online courses, uh, interviewing them, surveying them. And they, that's something they say. They don't really, they want all the courses to kind of just everything. <laughs> They're like, I don't care about your design. I just want it to be easy. And a template is easier for a student. But again, that's probably never going to happen at UNCG unless, again, the culture really shifts or we maybe get sued <laughs> for ADA compliance. Who can say? So Canvas is administered by UNCG Instructional Technology Services Learning Technologies, right? ITS has a unit called Learning Technologies, and they have um, their own ITCs and trainers within there. Um, they also are, it's run and administered and trained on by academic instructional technology consultants. So every department at UNCG has an ITC. So the, and some of them have one, some of them have two. So like Sarah's here, um, I know Sarah knows in the CBPA, it's Daniel and uh, Daniel's just one, you know, one person. Same with the college. Though the college is so large, we do have one ITC for the college, Anita. Um, and then, but then the Bryan School has two. And again, depending on how the school works, they might split up the departments. They might like say, well, I'm going to do labs and you run Canvas. Like when I worked at the School of Ed, there was two of us and uh, I really ran Canvas trainings, Canvas stuff, anything to do with Canvas. And um, my counter, my boss, Sandra, ran, um, again, more administrative level things. She ran the labs. We had like a portfolio system there. She ran all of that, anything to do with the licensing. So again, we split the work in that way, but they hired me really to help with campus. So again, it just depends on the unit. It's different. And, and then remember, ITCs are all different. Like you might talk to one and they're going to say pages are where it's at. I design with pages. And then others are going to say, I like modules. Um, and then others like UNCG Online, who run some of our online courses, but not all of them, they use something called a learning area, which actually takes students out of Canvas into a WordPress site. So we're all over the place at UNCG. And again, you might see other universities, um, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and Patrick pointed out like the idea of consistency. But again, there's positives and negatives, right? We got a lot of things going on, but students, that kind of confuses them sometimes. So um, Amanda Shipman, what? I lost your pen. Oh, it's okay, we'll find it again. Um, so Amanda Shipman, who works for ITS, she is our overall UNCG Canvas administrator. So May is, May is back. It's just one of those days. Um, so what do students think? We've kind of talked throughout this with students. So I sent out a survey to any student taking an online course around three years ago now. So we are um, due to do another one, I'm aware. <laughs> um, but really a lot of it was about information retrieval. Like how do you like to get information for course? So of course we talked about library services, but we did ask them this question of how often do you use the following methods to learn about new information for school? Mommy, like how do you want to learn about your classwork? And you can see mommy, here that... Mommy. That's Julian's Anthem shirt, remember? 
So um, you the the daily responses are shown here. Like, what do you look at daily to find out stuff about UNCG? And Canvas won out over even Google. So students like things to be in Canvas. Something else that has come up in interviews and this survey and other things we've done, students do not like to be taken out of Canvas. Like if the instructor is like, nope, don't like Canvas, I'd rather use a Google site. They don't like that. <laughs> they just wanna be able to go to Canvas, see all their stuff in there and do things there. Um, so whatever your feelings are about, I know she's in school. So I think I forgot that. So. You can watch TV downstairs, right? I'm not sure we'll watch, we'll watch Hocus Pocus later. We started Hocus Pocus last night. Okay, so um, that's it. So students like Canvas, that's the end of that story. Um, yes, people are um, giving uh, that. So Jenny lost power. I don't know if we're still recording, if not. Um, it says that we are, but I do apologize in advance. Yeah, it does say we are. You're fine. Um, and also, yeah, this is kind of crazy anyway with Maine. So thank you all for being understanding. Um, so just to go, here is what how Canvas works, right? So they have a rich content editor, which is like any editor that you've ever used, right? Like if you've used WordPress, if you use anything, they have this editor where you add text, images, and embed code, right? Like anything that makes the content work. So here are all, the, all of this is in, a rich content editor is in every element. So the way to like describe a quiz is in the rich content editor. The way you do, you know, modules are in the rich content editor. So modules are organizations of the closest thing to like folders, right? And that can be a file, a link, or a page. A page is basically like, think of it as just, just the rich content editor. It's a way to add content in that way. Um, so keep that in mind. So again, all this stuff you can do, you can make announcements, which goes out to your students through email, you um, can see all the people in your course. And the big thing about, you know, an LMS versus like a website, right, is that you can grade assignments, you can, um, you know, have a grade book, you have quizzing, right, um, all built within as well as discussion boards that are like, you know, blog posts, so you have all these like interactive features that are all within one place. And the nice thing again about Canvas is that they all work on this rich content editor. So once you know that rich content editor, you're good, you can do all of this stuff. And then it's just kind of a matter of like learning the tips and tricks of the other stuff. Uh, but again, I have always found Canvas like pretty easy to use. And if y'all have any questions about this, just let me know. Um, Meg's looking at our image now. So, okay, so instruction and content creation in the LMS. Um, so, um, this is what we're doing in the library. So, as um, at UNCG, we did create a librarian role. That was one of the first things I did when I started here. So, a librarian role is a course designer where you can go in and you can add content, right? Um, and then it also tags you as a librarian. So, students don't see you as an instructor. The the me good thing, because that means we can be added into courses without worrying so much about FERPA, right, like grade violations, sharing grades, getting weird with the grades, is that um, you don't get access to the grades as a librarian, but you can still be enrolled as an instructor if you're a librarian or archivist who are actually like doing grading with the instructor. Uh, you can add in more than one than the instructor of record, of course, because there's TA roles there and really the librarian is a course designer role. That's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, so you can um, also, um, as you once you get in there as a librarian, you can do anything the course designer can. So you can create content, you can embed content in the rich content editor, you can provide asynchronous and synchronous instruction, um, right, and you can link to your course guides. Right, so you can link away, you can do all this stuff, make announcements, you can just do, live your truth, do anything you want within Canvas. And another thing we have that we got more recently, like not right when I got here, but about a year ago now, is this integrate library resources through an LTI, which is LibGuides. We can now have LibGuides turned on in the course navigation under a, a tag, a, a tab, whatever, a, you know, on the left called library resources. Um, we're going to talk about that in more detail. Can you go downstairs and watch TV? I already turned the TV off. You turned the TV off? Why? <laughs> well, I'm not going to be done with this for a while, so you might want to get some toys, boo. 
Okay, so the librarian role, we talked about this. I jumped ahead. So um, the way this came about is that we worked with IT, we developed it, we looked at what other universities were doing. I was not the first person to do this. Um, and we just developed a role. So there are other roles too that have been developed. You know, okay, well, you want to go pick out other chips? Go pick out other ships. So here's how it works. You go to the people's tab, you add someone, you have to know their UNCG username, and then you just go down there and add them as a librarian. Done. Ooh, good times. So again, um, I know there's some archivists in here. We just had to pick a role that said librarian, we know. But again, remember, you can be added in there as archivist also. We just couldn't, we didn't want to call it like librarian archivist or archivist librarian to not confuse people. I will turn the TV on in a second. So maybe we'll have a break and I'll I'll turn the TV on for May in a second, but I'll just keep going for now. If you go downstairs, I'll be down there in a little bit. So here's the, if you're interested in this kind of thing, like here's the different stuff people can do in Canvas, right? So like a librarian is really the exact same as a designer. So that's pretty much it. Except we can't turn a course on or off, which is fine with me. I don't want to do that. Um, and I think that's about it. We also can't manage learning outcomes. Again, fine with me. So this is how it is. And we just, again, we worked with ITS and developed this role in that way. So here's how it works, right? Um, this is the library resources tab that I was talking about. So we have a, um, we did have to like pay extra money in that we moved our SpringShare LibGuide subscription from a regular subscription to a CMS, a content management subscription. Um, and it is a little bit more money per year, but we get other things like we got LiveWizard, which was a tutorial creation platform. Um, and we get the main thing we wanted was this. Um, so we um, want now we can add LibGuides into Canvas embedded in a course. Um, so um, the way that works, if you want to learn more about it, there's a link here, but you just go to the metadata of the LibGuide and link it to the course code. So if I want to link it to like Kinesiology 101, then I would like change the metadata to Kin 101. Um, and that would be how it worked. And it does work at the section level um, and with all the hybrid high flex things we have going on right now, it can work. The big thing you just need to know is the course code. So if you have any issues with this or want to interest in this, I can always like look at it with you. But the big thing is you need to know where the course code of the course is. And a lot of times instructors will change that because of some, again, hybrid section thing. So just make sure that you're kind of communicating with them and you can see that as a librarian in Canvas and I can show you all how to do that if you have any issues. But if you don't tag right either a major like guide like kinesiology or a course guide like Ken 101, of course I just made up, <laughs> then uh, you can add uh, the default to this guide um, that you see on your screen, a library resources canvas guide, um, which really we model to be as much like our library homepage as possible. So we have the chat, we have a link to every guide based on your major, we have the catalog embedded, and we have some general databases are like most used library databases in the middle. So we wanted to keep this very clean. Um, we wanted to keep this, you know, just simple so that if it defaults this guide, um, it is this way. And with it, this being the default guide if you do nothing to your guides right and liaisons decide what they want done to the guides not me liaisons live their truth with that workflow um it defaults this and this has become our like most used guide right like by far like this guy get clicks on a lot well this and like nursing research <laughs> like the nursing guide gets heavily used so this one so here's a um example of how this really helped us get our live guides used more um, I made this graph actually for my reappointment package to prove like I did something good. So here's the LibGuides view after library resources um, course navigation tab. So in September um, 2018, our guides reviewed overall um, 41,606 times in September for the whole month. For the month of September 2019, which is after we added in this LTI integration, our views went up by over 15,000. I don't know, I'm not great at math, but you know, there it is, it went way up. So again, this is a nice thing to think about, right? And that all these things that we're doing in Canvas gets all of our stuff used more. Because again, remember that first data point that I talked about, and I talk about a lot to administration, other librarians, students like Canvas. They like things in Canvas. It makes them use stuff if you put it and get it into Canvas. So if you're interested in kind of seeing this default of, you know, what it is, uh, 
this is the default guide, right? This, uh, they call it auto magic fill um, or something. I don't know. Um, and here it is. Um, it never, like the fact that I just clicked on it, not from Canvas is probably gonna confuse the analytics. Cause like, we don't have this linked anywhere. It's only in Canvas. But notice like, I'm gonna have to change this. I'm just thinking about it now, like path is going away, um, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but um, there it is. So um, that is what it looks like. So here's some uh, a graph from UNC Charlotte. They actually turned on this Canvas LTI a semester earlier, earlier than us. So I work with their librarians a lot on like, how's it going? What are we doing? What do we like? What do we not like? And we did a presentation for NCLA about how much we like love our LTI integration with Canvas. And here's a graph that they made where they looked at one guide, I think a respiratory therapy guide. Um, and they looked at um, A, did it go up after they turned the LTI on? And yes, that did happen. But they also looked at where is the traffic coming from in terms of the numbers going up? Like, was it just a fluke that the guide got used more? And no, um, almost 70% of the clicks into the guide are now coming from Canvas. So that's a cool number. I like this graph. I think it's pretty. So here we go. So we talked about that and what they can do in Canvas. And just notice that there's lots of different things that it, like, liaisons are doing. So again, I'm happy to show examples and talk through things, but I didn't want to, again, harp on things that you already know. Um, but you can make modules. You can embed a video on a page. You could create an announcement saying like, hey, here I am, your librarian or your archivist, or like you could throw a Zoom link into there. Some Canvas courses, again, use that Zoom LTI, right, where they're doing virtual sessions through Canvas. It's, a, it's an instrument integration of Zoom. So you could get in there, you could uh, create one, you could uh, be involved in that way if you're enrolled as a librarian or an instructor. Um, so again, there's lots of different things that are going on. So one of the main things we've done in Canvas uh, recently in terms of like library um, adding content is we have created a whole new suite of research tutorials to replace, to eventually replace PATH. We're just calling them right now UNCG Libraries Research Tutorials. Um, we don't. If you have a clever name for me, like please let me know. Maybe we can uh, shift it and be more clever moving forward. But um, course integrated, they're just basically like research information literacy modules that are framed off of Jenny's uh, student learning objectives on information literacy. I mean, they're not Jenny's. They're all of ours, but Jenny helped make them um, as our information literacy coordinator. Um, so they're divided into categories of find, create, evaluate, credit, use, um, and then they have different modules based on that. So this link here does take you out into the platform, uh, the website platform, which is this is what it was like, we make them and we publish them here first. But then we also add them to Canvas Commons, which is the um, object repository off of Canvas. Um, so you can see here all the different ones we have. We have some for advanced research to um, people from SCUA. Come on, y'all can come on and make some if you can find a way to hook it to these categories. Um, and then here is the list too for the chat if y'all wanna look at them in case you haven't seen them yet. Um, so again, notice that they're in Canvas Commons as well. So I recently just made this where you can go out into this Google Doc and see you know, um, links directly into the Canvas Commons um, module as well. Um, so you can check that out. But here's what they look like in Canvas Commons, the screenshot. You go to, oh, I, I messed up on the arrow. You go to Commons, not Studio. <laughs> Made this quickly, I guess. Commons. And then if you just search UNCG Libraries, all of them will show up. So um, you can see here some of our most used one. Um, plagiarism is, of course, a very heavily used one. Um, but not far behind, I guess, is um, use, navigating library resources, like learning how to use our library website. Um, that's another popular one. Um, so um, we have found so far in our analytics, we have a survey attached to this form um, where students can let us know what they think. A, they like it so far. We're getting um, heavy, like not heavy, nice marks. People are like, yay, we like it. Um, and it's mostly filled out by students. Last time I checked, we had about 900 students who had filled out the assessment form. Um, then don't tease him with your snack, please. You're, you're silly, Billy. Um, sit on my lap again. Okay, so anyway, um, and they're mostly accessing these tutorials from Canvas. So even though it says like, oh, this tutorial, this module has been downloaded 23 times, you don't know how many students are in those 23 classes, right? Like, let's say they're a large lecture class with 100 people. Um, hey, can you take notes? Um, Patrick just came in. My husband just came in. <laughs> Your chips. Okay. So he can help me in my uh, managing 
uh, here while presenting to you. Great. Okay. So um, anyway, if this was downloaded into 23 classes and let's say they had 50 each, again, that's a lot. That's like a thousand students. Uh, so again, a canvas can be really accessible to us in terms of our content in that way. So um, we also, of course, have e-reserves in there. I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but they use Box as a secure cloud storage system to put our readings in there. And it also enables them to be able to turn it off right at the end of the semester, which helps us with copyright and licensing. Uh, if you all want to learn more about that, let me know. But um, it's not I don't run that as the campus administrator access services run that Amy Smith. And uh, but and liaisons will like work with instructors on getting, you know, getting the form filled out because there's a form they fill out. Um, but that's it. It's pretty basic and I think it works well. So um, thinking through challenges, assessment and future directions, um, mostly just challenges. And y'all can put in the chat, like, what are some challenges y'all think of with Canvas? Like, um, when you think about like, how can I be a better librarian use or archivist using Canvas? Like, what are some issues that come to mind for you? So Jenny says, I'm embedded in a lot of classes and I get confused. Yeah, so I think that like the librarian role is positive because you're like, just throw me in there. But when you're put into the librarian role, it means that like all these courses show up on your dashboard and uh, then you get all the emails about it. And then you're like, which ones am I embedded in and which ones am I not? Um, it does get confusing. Yes, like Jenny said, I'm in 20 different sections of English 101. Yay. Um, so then someone said getting students to fix their settings so they get emails when I put an announcement. So it's defaulted that students get emails when they get an announcement unless they turn that off. So if they manually went in and turned it off, I'm not trying to sound mean, but like that's on them. I don't know why they would do that because that's like where I send out all the relevant information about a course. Um, so um, they would uh, have to do that. Um, I sometimes in my online, I teach online um, at UNCG too. Um, sometimes I'll tell them at the beginning, like, hey, I'm communicating with you through an announcement. So, um, you know, it is default to this, but if you went in and changed it, like you need to come back in and think through changing it back. Or like, be sure you monitor announcements on your own. Um, if they turn it off, but then they're like, you know, good enough to like come in and check the announcements periodically, that's fine too. Um, so yeah. So then Patrick's saying having to update things. Yeah, so like that's an issue too, right? Like like Jenny said, maybe you're embedded in a lot of courses and you're like, ugh, I wanna update this thing. Um, yeah, and then that's the thing too. You can of course move a shell from semester to semester. So I've taught this course online basically almost since I started at UNCG again about six years ago. And uh, I just move the shell every semester in a class, but you know, links break. Um, and there is no tool in Canvas right now that's gonna be like, you have 10 broken links in your course and here they are. You just have to go in and check all your modules um, and make sure your links are working. And then like, if you move it from semester to semester, you have to go into your syllabus and change all the dates, think through what worked and didn't work. So yeah, it's not um, a robot, but it does help. <laughs> Again, it just boggles my mind that uh, people don't use it and they like teach, <laughs> but um, even for face-to-face. Yeah, so someone said, uh, Jenny was saying only 10, but 10 is still a lot. I mean, I can show you all my Canvas dashboard at the end, but it is like bonkers how many classes I'm in. So some things that do happen in LMS, I think this is similar to what Patrick said with updating things, but links not working and particularly faculty struggle with permalink. So, um, and then students struggle with permalink. So I've had faculty be like, well, I put all these readings into Canvas and like now they're all broken. It's because they didn't use the permalink, right? Um, and so, and we recommend using permalinks over downloading PDFs and uploading them based on licensing and copyright issues with uh, uploading PDFs into your course of these academic articles, um, which leads into the copyright issue, right? Faculty, um, this is being recorded, but they, you know, they struggle with copyright and that fair use is usually thrown out as a, as a way to do a lot of things that you're like, well, you know, that's not really how that works. Um, and then there's a lot of times like a rumor, right? An idea that if it's behind this login, then it's, you know, you're good, right? You can do whatever you want because you, your students are logging in. 
not true. You still have to follow, like, like you can't rip a movie and put it into Canvas um, just because it's behind a login. That's still illegal, unfortunately. Um, so Jenny pointed this out. So great. It's like you knew I was going to say this, but workload balance and embedding. Um, yeah, it's great that it's easy to add us as librarians, but then faculty can just get like kind of happy-go-lucky with that, right? They're like, you're a librarian, you're a librarian, you're a librarian. And then like, again, you could be like me. And I think I'm in like, what? 20 courses all at all times, getting emails, being like, is this, do I need to read this email or not? Like, is Ken 721 something that I need to like know about right now? Or like, am I just in there to like, in case they need me? Cause that's my kinesiology, especially they just add me in and they're like, just be there in case there's questions. But then like, I get all these emails and I'm like, are these questions or what? So that can be a kind of like complicated thing. So student view can be, is, is there. So when you're in Canvas, you're an instructor, right? You're a librarian, you can do all this editing, you see things differently, but students don't see things that way. So um, you really have to be careful of that, right? Like whether you're designing a module, thinking through something. So um, there is a student view button and then it just shows you exactly how it is. And then if you're like teaching a course and you're in Canvas as an instructor librarian, um, using the student view so that they don't see your back end like grading or anything like that can be uh, useful too. And then, of course, there's sometimes confusion with support like who do I go to for Canvas? Like, do I put in a six tech ticket? Do I talk to Sam? I mean, whatever you want. You can talk to me first. If I can't answer it, I would advise a six tech ticket because that then links six tech. The way it works is that they shoot out. I would not, I mean, no one from Aaron is here, right? But like, I probably wouldn't put in a Discord ticket, um, but you can start there. And if it's not them, they can link you out to Six Tech as well. So um, yeah, so Patrick says, talk to Sam. Yes, that's totally fine. Oh, I have to train my students at the beginning of every semester how to see the comments that we make in their assignments. Yeah, it's so there are not, videos. It's not clear. Yeah, it's from not, Canvas. Yeah. Um, I actually usually at the beginning of a semester tell my students like the way I grade is through Canvas and the comments are there and you need to read the comments to understand why I gave you X amount of grade. Um, and they um, then, and then there's a video I link to if you want me to find it for you um, that yes. shows them where their comments are in the grade book. Um, awesome. so has two, actually Canvas, another thing about Canvas that I think they beat out Blackboard and a lot of their competition is that as they got more popular, they added in like an army of people making um, training documentation. So they have a full on suite of, you know, guides that I think are pretty clear and nice about um, the back end of Canvas for instructor. And then they also have a really nice suite of student guides. And I use the student guides a lot, right, because students don't get a whole lot of Canvas training. Face-to-face uh, -face or online. Um, they get a couple of basic, like, here's the basics of how to log in. But because everyone designs Canvas so differently and uses it so differently at UNCG, that's about it. So it's really on us as instructors, librarians, to like not assume that students are Canvas experts. Um, and I think Sarah makes a great point. Um, but I always go to these Canvas student guides and I'm constantly making announcements about those as well. So yeah, Sean said now that all of Guilford County Schools is using Canvas with zero training for students. Yeah, I'm I'm there with you, Sean. Um, and also, side note, as someone who has used Canvas for again about six years on the back end, I don't know what they're doing with those bonkers tables, um, GCS. Um, I mean, I know that they did this quickly and they're angels. Um, but like, why? Why are they using tables? It's so confusing. Like I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, you know, they have something called modules that just like organizes it week by week. And they were like, yeah, I saw that once. And like, that looks so much more like easy to use than tables. And I was like, yeah. Anyway, that's my rant about GCS. Anyway, GCS, you're doing a great job if you ever watch this. Yeah, they use like tables, um, like they use pages, not modules. And then they put everything in tables. So it's like Monday, less and less and then like five tables going across. So you have to like scroll across. You get really confused about where you are. Every week is on a page. Yeah, yikes is right. But let me shock y'all. They didn't ask me what. <laughs> Some of these parents on Facebook are like, I can design Canvas for you. I'm like, live your truth. Okay, so just a real quick thing. I'm not gonna harp on this, but I do get this question a lot is like, um, you know, using Canvas like for professional development or community outreach. 
Um, so you can't, there are free versions of uh, LMSs available on almost every platform, right? Like Blackboard has one, Canvas has one. So Canvas, this is called Canvas Free for Teachers. Um, and uh, it's free to use. So if you go online, you go there and say, I'm an instructor at a K-12 school or whatever, you can just click on there and it will let you create a course. And it will, there are limits, right? Like you can't do LTI integrations. You can't, um, you have like file upload limits, things like that. But it gives you the overall structure of an online course for free outside of the UNCG, UNCG platform. So you can, again, allow in non-UNCG email addresses. If you want to make, ask in someone without a UNCG email address into uh, UNCG Canvas right now, it's kind of a nightmare, um, even if they're just like a guest speaker. Um, so if you have that need, let me know. It's a whole thing. But um, for Canvas free for teachers, it's just like, you can go bonkers. You can um, enroll people. You can create an enroll link, right? So if you can send it out to a whole group of alumni or whatever, and then they all enrolls them in there. So things to keep in mind, right, is like, do you really need to use an LMS? So here's a little table I made thinking through like, should you use an LMS, a LibGuide, or a website um, for whatever like community outreach, professional development you're doing outside of UNCG. Um, so the really big thing is the only reason I would ever use a free LMS is that you really need that like course-like features, right? Quizzing, grades, um, you need them to be behind the login. You need to see the learning analytics. Again, you, you want that course experience. You want to grade them and say like, I can track how they did that they read this stuff. Um, if you really just want like a place to put links, um, a LibGuide is totally fine, easy to make, gives you analytics, doesn't require a login. Uh, so I would recommend thinking through that if you just really want links. And you can even remember do activities. You can embed a Google form, uh, a LibWizard, a uh, you know link out to a Google Doc, a Google spreadsheet where people could be editing it within the link. You can do interactions. Uh, with a LibGuide, but um, again, if that, it's that grading, if you need grading, the LMS is better. And then a website, again, could be better. Um, do you need a place to promote events? Does it need to be branded to UNCG? Um, do you not have to edit it super often? Like to me, like I wouldn't create a website for something that I need to edit like that day, because you all know, like our editing system is not the fastest in terms of that, which is fine. I totally get that there's a whole workflow in place, but if you need to be able to quickly add a link quickly make it, then that's not what I would do either. But again, if you're looking for that branding, that kind of thing. Um, so Patrick, that's really funny. Um, Patrick said, I want to grade donors. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I don't even work in archives. So um, again, remember, uh, that is the deal. So here are the free LMSs if you wanted to play around with them. Live your truth. Um, Canvas free for teachers. I like it. It's just like our Canvas. If anything, be careful. Don't get confused that you're not in the UNCG campus. So here's an example of something that we did create an LMS uh, for an NCLA, North Carolina Library Association program called Present Like a Pro, where library and professional development, um, Canvas, they, we wanted them to kind of go through like a MOOC-like free course experience. So that's what we did in Canvas Free for Teachers. Okay, I made it. I feel like May slowed me down a little bit, but here we are. So I wanted to have plenty of time for Canvas questions, talking about projects, thinking through things. As y'all are thinking through it, I really need water. So I'll be right back. So you feel free to put stuff in the chat, start unmuting, but I'm gonna go grab some water real fast. So while Sam is doing that, I will ask if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask or anything they would like to share. So for the sake of the recording, I will mention that Sam has gotten lots of love in the chat for being a great multitasking mom slash employee slash presenter. So. Nice job, Sam. I mean, I'm glad May will live on forever in this recording. Maybe one day, like, I'll find this again on YouTube when, like, she is getting, like, married or, like, graduating or getting a PhD or something. I'd be like, look, look what you did to me <laughs> when you were three years old. Um, so, yeah, for her wedding. Yeah, amazing. 
Um, so yeah, any questions, concerns, stories? I know, again, like, I think we have a good mix of people here. Uh, props to Patrick for making a great training course for, um, I think you are your student employees, Access Services um, did a similar thing um, where they made a training course for their student employees um, in Canvas. So it can be great for that kind of training program, um, especially within internal at UNCG. Um, I know Sarah um, does a lot of great stuff in Canvas. Uh, Sarah, you're, are you an instructor of record? I know you're deeply embedded in a lot of those music research courses. Jenny is also great at Canvas. Um, I'm know. not the instructor of record, but I do lots of instructor stuff. I mean, basically the same stuff, but uh, I'm not responsible for as much as the instructor of record. So lucky me. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't want to be the instructor of record, you know, unless you're paying me or something. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Give me that no. money. <laughs> Making me the instructor. Well, right? we have two. We have two sections of 135 this semester, and it's a. It's about 120 students between the two Ooh. sections, and uh, yeah, it's a little crazy. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of talked about this in ROI, and I'm not sure anyone will get this deep into the recording anyway, so we can talk about this. I feel like freely, but um, you know, I think like like what Jenny pointed out with this, like you start just getting embedded in all these courses. It's too much. Like one person can't be embedded in all the courses for their whole like area. And I found that once instructors realize you kind of know how to do stuff in Canvas, they're like, oh, come on in, go crazy. You know, and you're like, well, I, I don't have the capacity to like, you know, do this for every course. So like kind of learning to say no. And also like, I really make them send me their syllabus. Like I'm not gonna be like adding content beyond a tutorial for you unless I can like look through your syllabus and really find a way that for us to collaborate right, beyond just like, you know, again, something where I can throw in a tutorial about permalinks or um, whatever in there, um, that kind of thing. And I think, again, I'm, I mean, I don't like to like toot my own horn. I didn't do all of them at all. Um, it was a team effort, but those tutorials have been really helpful um, in Canvas Commons because we can just grab them or an instructor can grab them and you can just tweak it, right, to be like music specific or archive specific. Um, like Jenny took a lot of relevant tutorials and like cut them and condensed them into one like college writing module for English 101 classes. And I think that was a really great use of like how flexible they can be in Canvas. Um, so like other things can be done in that way. Um, so yeah, setting boundaries, yes. Um, learning to say no, right? Leaning into the power of no. <laughs> Um, so yeah, does anyone not like camp? Well, some people are like, you know, not the hugest canvas people. I think when Rachel, Rachel has done a lot to help us put, Rachel inputted all of the tutorials in Canvas Commons, so prop Rachel, if you ever watch this later. Um, but uh, I think when Rachel first started here, she was like, oh, I don't really love canvas, but I think she's grown to like it. And again, knowing that Students like Canvas, whether you do or not, is important. Yeah, so it's people, I think a lot of people who like were here when Blackboard was here, when Canvas came, they were like, oh, thank God, you know? But I just wonder if you, like, I remember like there was such hate of Blackboard. I wonder if there will be, I mean, there could be a new product in a couple of years that everyone's like, ugh, Canvas, this new thing is so much better. So um, yeah, the bar for yeah, Blackboard got clunky. But remember, I mean, Blackboard dominated the LMS market for a long time. I mean, they were like the Google, no one thought they could like break through. But and then again, here came Canvas, who was like, we're just gonna clean things up, make it simpler, you know, make the interface more like web 2.0 friendly. And, and now look at them, they're dominating the LMS market. So yeah, so an issue that comes up too sometimes that, you know, conferences have started talking on is um, Canvas and analytics. So like what's happening to all this data? That's kind of one of those big data questions that you could debate and go on and on about for a long time. Um, and there are tons of great conference presentations out there about it if you're interested. But they have, that's something they have been dinged for is like, what are they doing with all the data? I don't really know. 
I'm sorry. I also am like recovering from a cold. Sorry, I had to go get water. But I made it without blowing my nose. Hydration is important. So great. Well, if any, if there's no other questions or concern, I mean, again, I have Canvas up too. If some, if anyone was like, in case someone in the session was like, show me something or um, anything like that. So if you want me to, I did um, get it up and you can see <laughs> I'm in 40 courses <laughs> that are published right now and orgs. You can also use them for organizations, right? Um, see like org, org. Um, but yeah, a lot of these I don't, I don't do much with. I don't think they're all even from fall 2020. But you can see the overall interface of Canvas. All right, thank you, Sam. I went and looked at mine. I'm in 33, so I'm getting. Nice. I'm, I'm I'm approaching Sam level. Um, yeah. I mean, when I was an ITC, I think it was worse because, like, you know. But as an ITC, I had the ability to go into a course on the back end. I cannot, you know, any course in the school of ed. I could just hop in and hop out, right? I don't have that ability as a librarian. <laughs> I, I, uh, no, I do not have that ability. But I do go to all the ITC's meetings, bye Melanie. Um, I do go to um, all the ITC meetings, you know, so if you have any questions for them ever, like let me know or anything you want me to share with them about feedback you have about Canvas. Um, sorry, Jenny, talk about your ULBL sessions before people leave. Oh yeah, so we've got two sessions scheduled next Tuesday to keep your mind off of some national events. Um, one is Maggie doing um, another visual thinking strategies workshop. If you went to our first one, it was really cool. And this is gonna be more um, just kind of applications of that, kind of practicing with it. Um, <clears throat> and if you look at the ULVLC calendar, um, I do have a link to her original presentation, which goes into some depth. And then that's that's at 1 p.m. that day. And then at 4 p.m. next Tuesday, we have um, a, a session on anything but the election. And Rachel and I are going to be taking the lead on that. Um, and it is going to be fun. I think we're going to talk about nothing election related. We're going to talk about some, um, you know, like, chill relaxation techniques, things that you can do in Zoom that you might be able to integrate into your own classes or meetings. Something I've been looking at maybe doing in some of my synchronous classes is like some stretch breaks and stuff like that, um, which I think could be cool. So we're gonna be doing that um, and just having fun, hopefully. So if y'all have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, but I, um, we are going to continue. We're going to keep the ULVLC going. There are also, I think we'll probably talk about this at all personnel maybe. Um, there are going to be some additional opportunities for internal professional development during the time that uh, that lengthy sort of break that we have this year for students. So we have lots of options. But yes, I want to thank Sam so much for doing this session. Um, <clears throat> and it will be posted in whatever the recording format ends up looking like. It will be posted on the ULBLC uh, guide, which I have recently reorganized. Um, and I'm going to put the link in here. Um, that has, uh, I have organized all of the um, archived sessions so far. So all right, everyone. I hope everyone has a great day. Stay safe. It's pretty wild outside. Um, and uh, thanks again to Sam. Bye, y'all. Bye, Jenny. Thank you.